that the people of Ghana has given us. This is evidence in the impressive strides the nation has made in the past 22 months. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the President, I wish to thank you all, the citizens of this country, for your patience, perseverance, sacrifices, activism, and partnership that you have extended to this government. So far reaching and non-partisan at times as these national sacrifices have been that even now some members of the minority in parliament have decided to lead the campaign for a cleaner environment by dumping their gas gasoline Toyota Land Cruisers to ride bicycles to work. For example, For example, for example, Mr. Speaker, a former deputy, a former deputy minister for power, a former deputy minister of power during the unforgiving do so era under President John Dramani Mahama, was seen only two evenings ago riding his bicycle to a luxury furniture shop to get the country out of some very rough seas. We are not proud of the fact that there is still hardship in the country, but we are comforted by the fact that we have managed to ease the impact of the hardships that the Ghanaian people have been resigned to proud to December 7, 2016. We are not there yet. We still have a long way to go in fulfilling the manifest destiny of this blessed land. Indeed, we are being repaid for the years the Lord have eaten. So, Mr. Speaker, what is, however, clear is that the nation is moving forward under this government and moving forward in the right direction. We are now, Mr. Speaker, we are now, Mr. Speaker, on course to exit the inherited IMF program at the end of this year. Yeah. It has been a collective effort by all of us meant for exercising the kind of macroeconomic competence and discipline that was evidently lacking in the past, and the people for their patience, understanding, and keeping faith with their government. The program may have, may have had its critics because of the constraints it imposed, but it was necessary to repeal because by 2014, Mr. Speaker, the government then had lost the fiscal discipline and had very little choice but to seek the bailout. We are grateful to the IMF and Sixteen, in public debt, which pushed the debt to GDP ratio to 73.1% at the end of 2016. Fast fall CD affecting even the meager profits that street workers struggle to make. High interest rates killing businesses. Effective return cash and carry under NHIS as a result of government arrears weak banking system and unstable financial systems and lest we forget mr speaker ghanaian businesses big and small were working only to pay electricity bills or to buy diesel for the generator we cannot forget so soon the havoc that five years of doing so caused to household businesses and all up and down this great country of ours these are just items on the long list of things that were broken and need to be fixed. Declining debt to GDP ratio, 
changing from a weak banking system to a strong, well-capitalized and better supervised banking system, a change from taxation that undermines production, a change from a predominance, a change from a predominance of sourcing to competitive tendering in procurement. This change has seen the public procurement authority making total savings of 1.8 billion from January 2017 to October 2018. It is important to a change from the abolition of nursing training allowance to a restoration. Let us watch the language of Every nursing language training allowance. Must be parliamentary. Order. Order will go. A change to increase the share of DD percent, a change in a more private sector to a vibrant job creating private sector, a change, a change, a change from rising graduate employment through programs such as the hundred thousand strong NAPCO coal. A change from a dying colonial railway network system that had that had been to that is now being re-energized. A change from His Excellency responded and promised an innovative change to bring jobs and income to every district through one district, one factory. An innovative change to bring development to our rural areas through one village, one dam, and the IPEP. An innovative change to more payment interoperability. An innovative change to three development authorities to be a, to be a vehicle for accelerated development and the allocation of capital expenditure in our rural areas. An innovative change to the establishment of the Zongo Development Fund as a vehicle to focus on the development needs of Zongo communities and an innovative change to the approach of entrepreneurship development through the establishment of a ministry and national entrepreneurship and innovation program. The major focus of the government in the last 22 months has been to clean the economic headwinds we inherited with the restoration and a half to 15 percent and further to 13 percent converted from ad valerium to specific tax. In fact, it is important to note that petroleum taxes as a percentage of the total price build up for petroleum price has reduced, Mr. Speaker, from 40 percent March 2017 to 26 percent today. We abolished levies imposed on Kaye churches by local authorities we abolished the one pen special import levy. We abolished 17 and a half percent VAT child on domestic airline tickets. We abolished 17 and a half percent VAT NHL on financial services. We abolished the 17 and a half VAT NHL on selected imported medicines that are not produced locally. We abolished the five percent VAT NHL on real estate sales. We abolished import duty and importation of spare parts. We reduce national education scheme levy from 5% to 2%. We reduce public land levy from 5% to 3%. After 22 months of disciplined economic management, Mr. Speaker, the results have been quite remarkable. Economic growth increased from 3.7% in 2016 to 8.5% in 2017. Agriculture growth increased from 3% in 2016 to 8.4% in 2017. Industry growth rose from negative 0.5% in 2016 to 16.7% six that the government has hit the deficit target. It is at 2.8% of GDP in June 2018 within the target of 4.5% of GDP in 20 in December 2018. Inflation, Mr. Speaker, declined from 15.4% in 2016 to 11.8% in 2017. Now stands, Mr. Speaker, 
in single digits at 95% in October 2018. The world has strengthened. The trade account recorded a deficit of $1.4 billion in June 2016, improved significantly to a surplus for the first time in two days of $1.1 billion as of June 2017, and another surplus of $1.1 billion as of June 2018. Our gross international reserves increased from $6.2 billion in December 2016, 3.5 months of import cover, to $7.3 billion as of June 2018, 3.9 months of support cover. Ghana's debt to GDP ratio, which increased from 32%, Mr. Speaker, in 2008, returned to Egypt again. In, in preparing this budget, we undertook broad associations with various stakeholders across the nation. Consequently, I present to this August House and to the people of our country a budget that delivers on the hopes and expectations of Ghanaians, a budget that speaks to the needs of hardworking Ghanaians, a budget that enables us to face the future with confidence, a budget that reflects government's commitment to building human capital through improvements in health and education. And second in the world after Mexico, after Mexico to fully integrate the SDG framework enabling us to track our financial performance in order to ensure progress on these important targets that affect the lives of our fellow Ghanaians. Mr. Speaker, our 2018 Ajuma budget aimed to build on our 2017 ASEM budget achievements and put the country back to work to grow the economy create jobs and improve the lives of Ghanaians. Economic growth is strong and we are on track to achieve our key macroeconomic targets for 2018 and the medium term. This is progress we can all be proud of. Yes. Mr. Speaker, the Gas Statistical Service completed the GDP rebasing as GDP base the 2017 GDP growth rate of 8.5% was revised down to 8.1%, which is the highest in recent years. We are fully aware of what happened the last time Ghana's economy were rebased. In November 2010, resulting in a 3% upward change, it gave the then managers of the economy a false sense of security as the debt to GDP ratio was significantly reduced. They went on a borrowing spree, forgetting that rebasing also exposed our various revenue we raised through taxation. Mr. Speaker, during the first half of 2018, real GDP grew by 5.4%, reflecting slower growth in the oil sector compared to 2017. But we are still on track achieve our revised target of 5.6% growth this year. Much of the higher growth in the past two years reflects our prudent economic management and flagship programs that respond to the realities of the majority of our citizens. In addition to significant achievements in stabilizing the economy, we are on course, Mr. Speaker, to achieve our fiscal deficit target of 4.5% for the year, 0.7% in the rebate series. This would be the second consecutive year this government has achieved a fiscal deficit tax. Last year's target of 6.3% was taxed to 5.9%. Our key economic targets for 2018 and the medium term will thus be achieved. This is progress we can all be proud of. Mr. Speaker, not only are we growing the economy, the Bank of Ghana has also done an excellent job in implementing monetary policy. This has resulted in inflation dropping single currency, dropping to single digits, lower interest rates, and a relatively stable currency. 
Despite recent turbulence in emerging markets and a strengthening U.S. dollar, the financial system is critical to the functioning and development of the economy and banks are central to our financial system. In addition to providing employment to a large segment of the population, the role of banks as a provider of credit and liquidity to the economy remains critical to the functioning of the economy. Mr. Speaker, weak macroeconomic conditions coupled with poor corporate governance and risk management in a number of banks over the past few years led to high levels of non performing loans and abuse of depositors' funds through related parties and affiliates in breach of regulatory requirements. In addition, lack of enforcement of the rules contributed to liquidity and insolvency challenges in the banking sector. As a result, we inherited a number of weak banks and specialized deposit-taking institutions, savings and loans companies, finance houses, rural and community banks, and microfinance institutions. This eventually led to an assumption and consolidation of seven banks with potentially adverse consequences for depositors, creditors, employers, suppliers, and other stakeholders. It was critically important that these banks be made to exit the financial system in a timely and ordered fashion to avoid contagion for the rest of the financial system. Mr. Speaker, since the assumption of office, by the current administration of the Bank of Ghana. Bold measures have been taken to restore the health and resilience of the banking sector and to clamp down on our lancing deposit-taking financial houses. In addition to the two insolvent banks that were closed last year by the Bank of Ghana, five more closed in August this year for insolvency and other infractions of the law. Screen the situation regarding these seven banks has so far cost some 9.9 .9 billion Ghana cities in money his government had not budgeted for and could surely have put in good use to fix our numerous infrastructure needs, roads, bridges, housing, etc. The government has continued to provide assurances to depositors and customers of licensed banks and specialized deposit taking institutions through demonstrable actions that their deposits are safe. Indeed, following the creation of the Consolidated Bank Limited, a wholly owned government of Ghana and licensed by the Bank of Ghana as a universal bank, the government capital